we jump in the first yeah, one. Okay, so this uh, first level is called Buzz Thrill. Great pun. Uh, and it's uh, this is made by a chap called uh, Ross Bullimore, who worked on uh, the Perfect Dark series, and he also worked on... Uh, which we have played uh, on this? Yeah. yeah. Um, he worked on the Perfect Dark series, and also more recently worked on the Little Big Planet series. So why don't you go ahead and play for it, yeah. and then uh, I'll talk a bit about it afterwards. Cool. We'll see how you get on. So I think the idea of this level was to have one core concept, uh, kind of gameplay concept, which is obviously the saws, and then uh, see how you can kind of evolve that and how many ideas you can get out of it, and also add a difficulty spike, but in a fair way. Spike. Yeah, indeed. Sorry, I missed that one. Okay. Bit, bit slow Ooh. today. Under there. Are we going to start getting those up here now, or? Uh, Unlike Ash, I don't need every coin. <laughs> I think yeah. that's where I go wrong. I was scuppered by my own greed. Oh, this is really cool. <laughs> oh no! You could have gone below as well, and I see there's a little pipe down there. Ah, secrets. Oh. 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 Always the top of the flagpole. <laughs> well done. So I really like this level, but it's, it's quite it's quite simple. But there's uh, there's a lot of thinking that goes into it. I mean, I saw Ross the other day sat there with his pen and paper drawing bits of this. Uh, so he, loads of he, different ways he's used the saws. If we can get yeah, that's the thing. Start. Like when when you look at it now in the level creator, you see it's only really using mm. two types of obstacle, which is the saw blades and the the moving platforms. So if you see here, he's put the coins in so that you can play and knows what the arc of their jump is. Like it's very easy to start off and make sure the player knows what the arc mm -hmm. of their jump is. So here's a challenge, which is obviously a safe challenge. You fall in, you're not going to die. And then there's one where you are going to die if you fall in. And he's put one below you and then above you so that you know you so basically you're well versed by then in yeah. the arc of your jump. Establishing the rules of what you can do. Yeah. This is quite a key one, which probably a lot of... Um, creators uh, on Mario Maker at the moment don't do, which is perceived danger. That, that saw looks like you know, it's going to kill you, but actually uh, it won't kill you. Uh, it will damage big Mario, but if you're, you won't actually die. So you see there. So it's just perceived oh, okay. danger. So the player feels, yeah, I've done that. And then there's some real, more real danger, more jump arc tests. And you can see the kind of the concepts evolved up to here before uh, kind of Ross introduced the next mechanic of the level. Um, so this here, again, you probably didn't think about it, but it's very subtle. He's teaching you to duck. This is, to, yeah, to make sure the player knows how to duck. Wow. Before you get to this, and again, if you foul, you're okay. Uh, it's a way of subtly introducing the mechanics. I'm like, oh, and I'm going to die, aren't I? <sighs> I'll just pop yourself there. <laughs> and I said that was a safe one. <laughs> I've broken the level. Um, and then from now on, it's just the mechanic kind of evolving. A lot of fun tests based on that jump arc. This is going to, I've made this more difficult by dying. But obviously, by teaching you to duck, he's put that idea in your head exactly. that maybe I can duck under these. And you spotted there earlier as well, there's a pipe down there which will encourage the player to maybe play again. And really good use of the coins to encourage the jump. And this arc. here bookends the level with again that jump arc, making sure you nail it to, to finish. I do also like the added challenge for the top of the flagpole, or you could just play mm. it safe. That's uh, that's a theme in a lot of the levels we've done where uh, there's there's kind of branching paths for you know both kinds of players. If you're an expert, you can kind of branch off and you can take this one. I mean, this is actually quite tricky to get to, even though you spotted it. Um, it's only really the advanced players that are going to get this. So you can make a challenging level, but it's one that you know um, perhaps a, le a lesser experienced player can also enjoy. So you can have um, an A route that's manageable and a B route exactly. that's a bit more advanced. Exactly. I think that's the first time I've made that jump without actually dying. It, it is fun to have those bits, those rewards mm. for the expert player, mm. rather than forcing everyone to be an expert. You and I think in, say, in the game that we're making, which is obviously a 3D platformer, um, we like to encourage and reward exploration as well, and you've seen that in a lot of the team's previous games. Yeah. Um, when you start putting that sort of stuff in your levels, then players are naturally going to want to explore and see what they can find. I quite like this as well. This is quite clever, like risk-reward. 
and I have died on this before. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, if anyone's actually played any of the team's past games will know, um, there's no way I'm leaving without collecting that. <laughs> I did actually get quite a uh, Donkey Kong Country vibe of the pipe just slightly visible off the bottom of the screen, because I remember Country we, having we, a we lot like, of We like to do a lot of that, yeah. just tucked down the bottom. Or yeah. So if I move on to another course...